About 80,000 Hindus live in New Zealand and they form the biggest community within the Indian diaspora. Having made New Zealand their home for more than 100 years, their culture is ever more significant. Karambri explains. Hindus have been practicing yoga, meditation and Ayurveda for centuries. In recent times, these practices have been gaining acceptance as lifestyle choices all over the world. Shedding light on their health benefits is the second New Zealand Hindu conference held at the Hindu Heritage Centre in Auckland. More than a hundred delegates from all over the world have gathered here to discuss the approach to holistic well-being, both yours and mine. The definition of wellness from Ayurvedic aspect comes body, mind and soul to be in harmony, to be in a balance. Dr. Nagendra has been researching the science behind Eastern practices and hopes the conference will help demystify them. This conference highlights uh, yoga and Ayurveda, bringing the health benefits to the New Zealand communities. So there have been presentations on yoga and also on Ayurveda. And uh, therefore at the end of the conference probably there could be enough interest among the people to take up to these practices, yoga and Ayurveda. We know that um, holistic approaches are really helpful, such as meditation, such as good living styles. And Ayurveda is a system that seeks to balance these things out um, and complement with other techniques. So I'm curious and that's why I'm here. A common perception may be that these disciplines are propagated by Hindus for Hindus and are all about Hinduism. When we look at um, the theme that the Hindu conference is putting together by drawing the wisdom from Ayurveda, yoga and meditation, they originated in the East, which was largely adopted by the Hindu philosophy and which still is in tradition in those societies. But they are universal principles. However, even to Hindu families like the Topiwalas in Auckland's Te Adatu, traditional medicine like Ayurveda is still only second to Western medicine. Two years ago, Nijal Topiwala was diagnosed with vitiligo. She started developing white patches on her chin and neck. Her condition was deemed incurable by her GP. It was on my chin at first when I recognised it and then spread all over here. Because I know my grandma has it, so and she has it all over her body, so I, I was a little scared that I might have it all over my body. Nijal's father, a science graduate and a pharmaceutical professional, didn't opt for Ayurveda in the first instance. I, I did not choose Ayurveda as a first option. Reason for that is my career is in pharmaceutical company, so I know that um, allopathic medicine comes into mass market after long research. It's safety for that medicines are proven. But it was in the first meeting I was told that there is no, no, no remedy in medical science. So we didn't take long time to go to Ayurveda. After a year of Ayurvedic treatment, today Najal has only one faint patch of vitiligo on her neck and she is confident of getting even better. It would take, like, it, it could even take a year, which it has. Two years, three years, but yeah, I never gave up. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are happy that it worked. Yeah. Now I feel as soon as, soon as it gets better, um, I'd be so happy. Can get on with my life, yeah. As human beings, we get drawn to or attracted to what is very recent. And that's also been the case with Hindus, uh, who largely come from India. It's again a matter of motivating people about the usefulness of systems which have been in the tradition for thousands of years. Whether more New Zealanders will choose holistic approaches to health is uncertain, but the Hindu Council hopes that the conference will be a positive step in that direction.